So in the last few years, Godox has really stepped up to the plate when it comes to creating high quality yet affordable lighting options for cinematographers and filmmakers. They've become a really big contender with other companies like Aperture and Nanlite while keeping their costs well below those other brands. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the Godox VL200, specifically what I like about it, what I wish was better, and hopefully offer a little bit of insight to you if you're considering purchasing this light. So when I first heard about Godox, I was eyeing the Aperture 120D, a light that is used by so many YouTubers that we've come to know and love so dearly. The only issue was is that that light was well above five, $600 and it was a bit out of my price range. So I stumbled upon the Godox SL60, which was at the time 134 bucks. It had definitely caught my attention, especially since a lot of people were comparing its output and its quality of light to the Aperture 120D. So I purchased the SL60, used it for about a year, and was pretty happy with it. It wasn't the best light in the world, but it held me over for a little while. And at some point, I started to realize that I needed to expand my lighting toolkit a bit. I first heard about the Godox VL series from a video by Gerald Undone, who is a YouTuber that I'm sure you've all heard of by now. Um, it was a really fantastic and well done video with a lot of the technical specs, so if you want to see that, I'll make sure to link it in the description. But initially, the thing that sparked my interest for this light, again, was the cost. And although it was not nearly as cheap as the SL series, this was more in like the four to five to six hundred dollar range, they had a lot of features that the SL series did not have, things that I wish that it had. So some of these features that the VL series offered would make this upgrade in price a lot more worth it for me. So first off, let's talk about what you get when you purchase this light. One of my favorite things about the new Godox lights is that they finally started selling them with these really nice cases. The SL60 came in a crappy cardboard box that fell apart within a few weeks. I still use it to transport that light because I don't want to purchase a separate case for it and it's proven to be pretty annoying. I'm a huge fan of these cases as they seem super sturdy, not too large and can hold a light as well as other accessories. Also you have these nice soft pads here which keeps everything nice and tucked away. Inside you'll get the light itself, a standard Bowens mount reflector attachment which is a little bit more improved from earlier models I guess, a remote control, a ballast, a power inverter, and the cables that are required to connect everything. So the Godox VL200 is a 5600K daylight balanced LED light. It boasts a CRI of 96 and a TLCI of 95. Now if you compare this to the Aperture 120D, the Aperture 120D has the same CRI rating, but it excels a little bit with a TLCI of 97. So I won't get super technical into this, but essentially CRI and TLCI are ratings given to a particular light based off of how accurately that light will render colors. In my opinion, anything above a 95 is pretty damn good. Now unfortunately, I don't have the correct tools to measure the color accuracy of the light myself, but I am able to show you the difference between the VL200 and the SL60, both set to 20% intensity with the same camera, lens, and softbox. So I read somewhere that some users experienced a bit of a green cast with the VL200. That's not something that I noticed myself, but in my opinion, it really depends on the camera, the lens, and the softbox that you use. So the Godox VL200 is capable of dimming from 0 to 100% and has a lux rating of 75,000 at about 3.3 feet. I won't pretend like I know what this means, but what I can say is that in a closed studio environment, I have my light set to about 17% and I rarely go over 30%. Um, if you were shooting during the day or in bright conditions, you might struggle a little bit more, but um, for what I'm doing, it's more than enough. So just to give you an example, here's what the light looks like at 100%. Obviously way too bright, I would need to apply a lot of ND to my camera to bring the exposure down. The light itself is controlled by an extremely unnecessarily large ballast which allows for the attachment of up to two V-mount batteries for say on location shooting. You have a on switch, you have the ability to change channels, and you have the dimming knob itself. Now the one thing that irks me about this light is how many cables there are and how extremely large the ballast is. I feel like this could have been designed differently to make it smaller, and when you want to plug this thing in, you need to attach a 4-pin XLR cable from the light to the ballast, and then another cable from the ballast to the power inverter, and then from the power inverter to the wall, giving you a total of three separate cables just to plug it in. Now, this seems silly to me. I'm sure there's some sort of technical reason as to why this is, but my preference is that the ballast could be a lot smaller, and that maybe there was just one or two cables to attach this to the wall. The kit comes with the classic Godox remote, which is the same one that I received with the SL60. Nothing fancy here, just a few options to adjust the intensity, select different channels, adjust the temperature if you had a bicolor LED option. Now the nice thing about this remote and the Godox lights themselves is that if you have multiple lights in your studio setup, you can control them all with one remote. 
So like here, I have my key light set to channel B and my hair light set to channel A and I can independently control them and dim them with just one remote. So if I wanted to turn, say, my key light off, I could do it like this. And I could turn it back on. And let's say I wanted to turn my hair light off. I can do it just like that. However, one thing that I did notice is that the VL200 won't dim below 20% when using the remote. I actually have to get up and go to the ballast if I want to go below 10% on the VL200. The SL60, on the other hand, won't go below 10% at all, whether using the remote or the ballast. Now, if I'm mistaken or if I'm missing something here, please feel free to call me out in the comments below. I will gladly admit defeat. So the light itself has a Bowens mount, which I've come to love and appreciate as an industry standard. That means for all of you light dome users, this light should work totally fine. I myself have a ton of Bowens mount attachments, so this makes it easy to throw on a bunch of accessories and different diffusion options. So another pretty important upgrade that Godox has made to this VL series compared to their earlier options is that they've done a really fantastic job at reducing the amount of fan noise coming from the light itself. With the SL60, which I'm using as my hair light, I can very audibly hear a bit of a fan rumbling. It's really low and minimal, but when you're in a closed studio environment, you really wanna do everything you can to avoid any noise at all. And just to show you an example, here is what the SL60 sounds like versus what the VL200 sounds like. So it's super sturdy, robust, and the build quality is just fantastic, especially when you compare it to Godox's earlier offerings. I feel like they really took this into consideration when releasing this new set of lights. Um, I think the light is totally capable of holding its own when compared to other brands like the Aperture 120D Mark II, while simultaneously saving you tons of money in the bank. And we all know how important that is when buying gear is sometimes a habit that we can't control. I'm looking at you, B&H. So that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new or maybe I answered a specific question about this light. If you do have any other questions, please leave that down below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you wanna stay updated on my work, new videos or other fun things like that, make sure to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm really hoping to build this thing up and start to release videos weekly. And with that, I will talk to you soon. Bye.